so uh talking about positive things now now that we have put all that to rest let's talk about positive things what do you make of the recent changes that ecb have made in the management position so joe root has obviously been dropped as a captain uh, he resigned yeah. actually he wasn't dropped he he resigned as mm-hmm. a captain and now ben stokes is has taken up the captaincy duties and uh, rob key is the managing director of england and you have a new coach in brendan mcclam as well at least test coach and uh, matthew mort is your limited overs coach so what do you make of these changes okay so the first thing you mentioned was Joe Root being dropped and Ben Stokes coming in. All I've got to say is, Carlos Brathwaite, remember the name. <laughs> That's all you've got to say to Ben Stokes, and then he'll be finished. But no, jokes aside, I think let's start from the top. So Rob Key, amazing acquisition. I think I think it's good to see ex-players in these higher positions. Like for yeah. India, for example, BCCI, they had Ganguly, and then uh, Dravid obviously is now the coach. These are these are legends of the game. I'm not saying Rob Key's a legend like Ganguly or 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 um, Dravid, but Rob Key knows his cricket, and that's the most important thing. So I think that's brilliant that he's at the top. He has good ideas. He's progressive, and he knows how to set up a plan. And I like that. Then we move down to the Test coach, Brendan McCullum. This guy, what a legend, boys! He was for New Zealand cricket. He was amazing. He changed New Zealand cricket. We see New Zealand cricket. as the team they are today but it started when mccullum was captain he instilled that mentality of how to play it's almost like you could say how india are the best i think i think personally they're the best test team in the world but it started back in ganguly's era where he made india this fearless fearless side then he went to yeah. dhoni and then he went to kohli i think this could be the start potentially for england once again where you know we've got mccullum as the coach he's going to have that mentality with ben stokes as a captain which i think's great because again ben 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 stokes is is fearless as well them two will combine they'll have that mentality that grit determination and hopefully this could be the start of something special and as for the limited overs coach again i think it's really good mott he again plays expansive cricket and that's what it's all about the only reservation i might have with mccullum is the fact that our team isn't that good so the style of cricket that we're planning yeah. on playing might not suit us but again i like it it's forward thinking attacking cricket yeah. that's what we like to see yeah that's what i was going to come to attacking cricket is what i was going to mention as well you like to see aggressive captains and aggressive uh, at least aggressive matches being played at the t- test level right so that's what i like the most about kohli people say that he's not a very good captain or all that but in test he was a very good captain and the fact that mm-hmm. he was so aggressive he instilled that attitude of being aggressive mm-hmm. and going for the win they'll not settle for a draw they'll go for the win that's what i like most about the kohli era uh, if you have to say that and uh, yeah so i feel that with mckellum you will definitely get that aggressiveness 100% but what what i don't understand with um, many many indian cricket fans is they some people they would get onto kohli's case so much and i'm like this guy's an amazing captain i'd love him to be a captain of my local cricket team never mind national team you know he's an amazing <laughs> captain of course he's an amazing player as well but um yeah i love attacking cricket i love aggressive captains and ben stokes will have that and also i think ben stokes passed in the 2019 ashes at headingley we know what he done in the in the 2019 world cup final we know this we know he's a born leader and for me personally if i see someone like ben stokes i'm going to give it my all to fight for him just like if i saw virat i'm going to try my absolute best to put everything out on the field and i think that's one reason why india have done so well in overseas tours because they see their captain fighting and they want to fight as well and i think with ben stokes at the helm this will be key for england going forward yeah so i think it's mm. because of the ipl that there has been the fans have been divided between rohit dhoni kohli so i think that is the reason why you might not understand why indian fans get behind kohli so much also indian cricket fans are the most passionate cricket fans out there in the world yeah i agree they can't agree. see their team losing even one match it is not allowed i know Mm. And with passion, you get toxicity as well. So that goes without saying. Someone takes a wicket of Tony, and then yeah. he gets he gets flooded with DMs abusing him, his family, because he took a wicket of the legendary player. Like, how is that his fault? He's supposed to do that. He's getting paid for that. <laughs> I think. I think. I agree. Indian fans are something else. But I think the only problem I think with some Indian fans is um. I think sometimes they think they have to win every game where it's like it's a yeah. game anything can happen you know yeah. like nobody saw India lose uh, exiting the group stages at the T20 World Cup you know 
But it happens. Like these things happen. India have a very good team. That's not a problem. You have three different teams you could put out in the tournament. It's not a problem, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying with uh, with the IPL. But I was going to ask Soham, who who do you think was the right person for captaincy for uh, India? Do you think Rohit's a good shout, or do you think it should have been Kohli still? Or Tess definitely should have been Kohli still. Uh, for limited overs, I'm okay with Rohit being the captain. I think he's a great captain. But I wouldn't have mind Kohli still being the captain. But when Kohli left the test captaincy, I was devastated. I was mm. like, peak offended. Like, I was the toxic Indian cricket fan that you were talking about because I wanted <laughs> Kohli to stay as the captain. <laughs> of, mm. At least in test, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll have to agree with Soham on that. But, but about the limited overs thing, I was definitely team Rohit. I, I've been team Rohit since a long while now. Since probably before the 2019 World Cup. Wow. And I'm not just saying it because Kohli hasn't won trophies now. But I've been saying it since a long time now. Because I feel that in limited overs cricket, you need a little more composure while making decisions. Mm. And I feel that with Rohit, you get that. And with Virat, you probably don't. Like, when I look at uh, tests, for example, I look at the long-term uh, structure, uh, long-term planning, long-term strategy making. Uh, strategic decision making right and with that you you have Virat as a very good captain as a very aggressive captain and he's uh, shaping the team in a particular manner that I like but in yeah. limited overs I feel that it, uh, during the game your captaincy comes out more and that's where I feel that uh, with Rohit you you just get that sort of you know assurance that you're going to be in the team there's certain sense of uh, consistency at what is happening in the team and what is not with Virat you, you do not know who's going to be playing the next match because there's no certainty of you being in the next level because you have performed in the previous one. So, yeah. So, that's what my apprehension with Kohli was at that point. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think they're very good points from both of you. I also think as well, this season with the Mumbai Indians, that what you're saying about Rohit might not be true. But I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I think Rohit... No, I mean, might... you can criticise him on that. I have been criticising him about that too. Because yeah. that's what my main, uh, you know, problem with Kohli was. And now Rohit is doing the same. So... I mean, I don't know where to go next. <laughs> I mean, it's probably just the captaincy hat that puts you under pressure and then you have to take all these bold calls and, you know, the problem starts from there. Possibly, possibly. I'm just imagining that because I have no experience of leading the Indian side. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. so we were talking about split captaincy. Like, mm -hmm. you, you were talking about Virat Kohli versus Rohit. And now... You have a different coach for limited overs and different coach for test team for your test team. So, what are your thoughts on that? I like what they're doing because Mott's a bit different to McCullum. But in my opinion, I think it's nice to just have one coach that just does everything. Like, um, I'm pretty sure Ravi Shastri, he was um he was coach for everything for India, right? And yeah, then obviously yeah. he left after the World Cup. I liked Ravi. I think he was such a good coach. I liked him when yeah. he was an analyst as well. I remember the mm. 2007 World T20 final. Uh, his commentary on that final was amazing. But anyway, I loved Ravi Shastri. And I think it's nice to have one coach implement his mentality across everyone across the board. But then on the other side, you might have a different mentality for test playing cricket alongside limited overs. So there is something to consider. I personally just like when one coach is there. But I guess with the new with the new age of cricket, I guess everyone wants to try something new. So yeah, I mean, like let's be honest, nobody expected there to be two captains about 10, 15 years ago, as in one captain for the test side and one captain for the uh, one day international team. So I mean, no, that's recently only started. What 10 years ago, I'd say it started coming in a lot more. So yeah. um, I think you'll see different countries slowly adopt two different coaches. I don't like it, but it is what it is. I even my opinion is that we can't really form an opinion on it. Have we seen that before ever in international cricket? I don't think we have. It's been split coaching, right? So we are going into the new era of cricket now, and I think English cricket is the best, like the best board to ex experiment that because India is not losing anything, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> but we'll see what the effects are of it, or like, is it truthful or not? I, th I think what Soham saying is is a great point. I mean, it hasn't really been seen before and we're basing it off, well, especially me, I'm basing it off the past. But I think what Soham saying makes sense because English cricket at the moment is going through, I'm not saying turmoil, but it is turmoil. No, I'm joking. I think at the moment for English cricket, it's not the best. 
And if you don't try something different, you'll never know. So I like what Sorham's thinking, to be fair. And hopefully it pays off. But if it doesn't, I don't think it's the end of the world. So, yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, we've got New Zealand coming up in a couple of weeks' time. So let's see yeah. what happens in that first test series. McCullum's first ever test series. Can you imagine against New Zealand? It's just meant to be. <laughs> and Ben Stokes has the captain. I know, it's amazing. It's like almost if when, when, when Gary Kirsten used to coach India, let's say his first test series was against South yeah. Africa. Or when was it Greg yeah. Chappell or Ian Chappell that used to coach India as well? Greg Chappell, uh, yeah. Greg Chappell. We do not talk him. about those times. We do not talk about those <laughs> times in India. <laughs> yeah, just oh. just as an Indian as an Indian cricket fan, just lose the fifth test, please. Just please. <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs> no, but also, good. also, Soham mentioned that England cricket board would would be the perfect you know board to experiment. And that is true because England has done the most changes in cricket, has brought upon the most changes in cricket. They started mm-hmm. with the T20 format, I think. Mm-hmm, they yeah. uh, they started with aggressive uh, batting in limited yeah. overs recently. They are starting mm-hmm. with split coach uh, split coaching now. They started the hundred format now. So I think England cricket has been, you know, the most uh, initiative uh, cricket board across mm-hmm. all the teams in the world. I think, and that's probably why they are. You know, starting with the split uh, coaching as well because they're not afraid to experiment with things, and probably that's why it has helped them to some extent. I would say at least the, the two, two thousand nineteen World Cup. I mean, they won it because of the changes that they made after the two thousand fifteen World Cup debacle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, yeah. definitely very good points. I think. Um, I think with the other thing with the ECB as well is they have a lot of money, so that also helps as well because you yeah. can implement these changes and you don't need to worry about the costs. But yeah. I think what you're saying about after the 2015 World Cup was true. The only thing I might change in what you said is, um, yes, English cricket, especially the one-day internationals and T20, had the aggressive batting. But this is where the McCullum thing comes from. New Zealand were the first side to really have that style. And McCullum was yeah. the key to that. So that's what I like about McCullum at, English, uh, at, the, at England. Because, yes, I know Test cricket is different to to one day internationals, but it's the mentality that is important and men- and McCullum will bring that. I mean, I've seen McCullum hit 125 of 60 something deliveries at Edgebaston yeah. when he was in the T20 blast. Uh, I was like, this guy is uh, amazing. I still got an autograph from that guy. Like I always talk to people about this. I'm like, yeah, I've got Brendan McCullum's autograph. He's probably the most yeah. famous cricketer I've ever had an autograph from. That's why if I was in India, different story, but yeah, point is, He's a legend, McCullum. So hopefully he has the mentality to work himself through the team. But let's see what happens, boys. Hey.